Brett, so, so talking about uh, the issues of the, the girls fund, education funding and other things, is it sustainable to have the private sector um, only to look at the private sector as one of the key uh, issues of girl funding education? Um, what can we learn from what's been happening? What can we learn from what ILF has done so far? I think what's important to learn is that, um, for taking from the story of higher life, mm -hmm. these are Africans, Zimbabweans, mm -hmm. who've taken ownership of the challenges that Zimbabwe is facing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that for us as Africans, and even particularly Zimbabweans, mm -hmm. that we do not wait for either organizations or international donors, for them to come mm -hmm. and solve our own challenges or our own problems, because we understand our own problems and our own challenges. Mm -hmm. So it's either important that we also come together and say, this is what I'll do, I'll put my hand on this particular problem mm -hmm. and focus on it and come up with a model that can be replicated because mm -hmm. out of higher life what we see and what we've done over the years is that it's a model that can be replicated by anyone mm -hmm. so it's particularly you just putting your resources and plugging it in within a specific community and running with it so it's important that we also have other people coming in as different players from different sectors taking ownership of the challenges that we're facing mm -hmm. and bringing the solutions so we definitely need more hands on the plow not just having one organization only mm -hmm. You say that, Reverend, is it sustainable to wait on the on the pub, a, a private sector? What is the obligation of the government in as far as ensuring that every child who is out of school has access to education? If you um, refer to the Education Act, uh -huh. which has to be aligned, but in its state uh, talks about compulsory education, uh -huh. at least for the first seven years. Right. of the child's life, mm -hmm. um, that's primary education. Mm -hmm. And um, when the act says composer, mm -hmm. it means the state has an obligation to ensure that every child is in school. Right. And what has the CWC um, done to make sure that they're working on this issue? Because uh, Monica is coming from a private foundation uh, which is obviously owned by Zimbabwean. But also this constitution, section 75A, talks about every child should have an access to school. What What has ZNC done and what is being done to make sure that children are in school? The 27%, that's not, by the way. We continue to advocate uh, mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. to ensure that all children, all vulnerable children are in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have seen through this advocacy is that they've now at least allocated money for exam fees. Mm, nice. For children. So you and mean they, the grade seven or Chabadare must my exam fees are here? They, they will pay, but in this case, the state has put aside the budget for the vulnerable population mm. of society to ensure that they sit for public examination, mm -hmm. which is important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a contribution. Mm -hmm. But we would still want to see the state doing more mm -hmm. because already parents are contributing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for now, um, the contribution of parents uh, is not really quantified mm -hmm. by either the state mm -hmm. or the private sector itself. Right. Mm -hmm. No one has really done a study to say, how much are parents in Zimbabwe contributing to education? Mm. Okay. If we had those figures, then it would help us show to what extent the government met its obligation. Right now, we are part of the campaign mm. of every child in school mm. where we are urging the um, education minister mm. to uh, send out a circular mm. to ensure that, you know, heads of schools in all communities ensure that every child is in school. Even right. those children with disabilities, mm -hmm. they need to be provided for within their mm. communities. It's less costly when it's done at community level mm -hmm. than uh, getting them to institutions. Right. Um, we are also part of a coalition mm. which discusses from time to time issues of um, barriers to the girl empowerment mm -hmm. and one of it is uh, the fees that are charged right. by authorities mm -hmm. and uh, um, we also have societal attitudes mm -hmm. around the, um, 
girl empowerment. Right. There are communities that still feel the boy is more important than the mm. girl. Right. And yet, when we look at the population of Zimbabwe, 52% is the made women. up of yes. women or girls. Mm -hmm. So it's important to put more resources to the girl child um, because uh, in Shona, you know, right. meaning that the woman mm. is central mm -hmm. to family development. Right, right. And if they are not empowered, mm. it will affect society at mm. some stage mm. because then uh, they remain dependent. Right. And yet they are supposed to be independent mm. and contributing to general development of the country. Well, viewers, you are hearing it for yourself. There's need to emancipate the girl child. There's need to emancipate our children. And um, we are commemorating and celebrating the International Day of the Girl Child, where we are acknowledging the difficulties that the girl child has, whether we ask about the boys or not, but the girl child remains oppressed. We know it who is raped, who is raped the most, who is violated the most of the girl child. But we want to come from that place to a place of equity and equality. Don't go away, stay with us. Um, we are just taking a break.